Coming up today on Afternoon Live, it's a very special show as it's our Portland Rescue Mission Shelter 365 Telethon right here on K2. All show long, we will share tremendous personal stories of tragedy and recovery and tell you how you can make a difference and change a person's life. Afternoon Live starts right now. Hello and welcome to Afternoon Live. I'm Trey Renee Chambers and we are bringing you a very special show today to highlight an urgent need right here in our community. There's a crisis of hunger and homelessness affecting more than 16,000 people right here in our city who are lost in exhaustion, despair, loneliness, and even fear. Without help, these hurting people might give up entirely, but we have a chance to help them through the Portland Rescue Mission. For hundreds of people every day, the mission stands as a beacon of hope in the darkness. Well, I came to the Portland Rescue Mission because I needed a place to live and some direction. I had no hope. I didn't want to live anymore and I was just ready to be done with life. I was homeless on the street and I came as a guest to have the meals. And the reason I came to the mission was ultimately because of hope, because I wanted to change my life for the better. Since 1949, the Portland Rescue Mission has been serving the homeless and hungry right here on Burnside. We serve through shelter every night. Over 200 people will be here tonight with us. We serve through dinners and breakfasts every day of the year. We have 24 seven bathrooms for people to come in. There's always a listening ear down in that lobby for people to come in and talk any time of day or night. But we do all of that to give hope. I came across a rescue mission and found a place that had resources, invited people in, and, and I actually started using those resources as I found people in need in the community. I actually started bringing them into the rescue mission, and people of all race, color, creed, uh, sexual orientation are welcome with open arms here. We have Connect and Link, and when these ministries we stabilize the folks in the street, and then we help advocate for them into permanent housing and or jobs. So I came into the LINK program, and this is a safe house. And it restored a lot of dignity in me that maybe I had lost. We actually build these relationships with the guys. It's person to person, it's real life situations to real life situations. And it's an opportunity to give them some kind of direction, some kind of hope that there's something waiting for them when they get out of here. Almost half of the people suffering from homelessness in our country are women and children. And women are particularly vulnerable in that situation, which is why we have Connect. We focus on safety. I'm not so tough that I could sleep outside and, and live that life. I, I had seen it up close and personal around me. I have addressed my recovery and my mental health, and my goal is to be a peer support specialist to help other people that are absolutely in the same position that I've been in. Our new life ministry is an intensive one-year residential program for women and men that suffer from homelessness and addiction. And the women's program takes place at Shepherd's Door in Northeast Portland. When I completed the new life ministry program at Shepherd's Door, I was able to find freedom, freedom to be able to live my life without using drugs or alcohol. Most of the men that come to our Harbor facility for New Life Ministry have started with us downtown in Burnside. I came into the New Life Ministry program um, through somebody who kept tabs on me in my transient times. It's given me insight into my purpose and my meaning. It's given me a lot of good steps to work on towards achieving those objectives. And it's given me faith that through all the bad times that God's been with me. Graduates of our New Life Ministry that want to give back and deepen their skills in serving others. Join our staff in a one-year ministry called Service Ministry, where they serve folks down here at the Burnside Mission or at our recovery sites in Northeast Portland. Currently, I work here. I do my service work um, with the Connect Women. I'm able to just like talk to them and tell them experiences from my life, you know, in hopes that it'll help their life. It really warms my heart to see a man um, be where I was and to pick himself up and to dust off and be able to go back out in the world. And it's one of those things you can't put a price tag on. No, these guys that just turn their lives around and, and they go from almost nothing to 
the top of the world type thing. My wife and I have just made this a top priority to make it the top of our contribution list. And we think it's a very worthwhile cause. I've worked closely with the Portland Rescue Mission over the last 14 years, and I've always found them to be very willing and on the spot from providing shelter, providing meals, to discussing the needs of the community. Uh, I couldn't be more impressed with the Portland Rescue Mission. My position in life doesn't matter. It's where God sees me. There is hope in living. Freedom from addiction is possible. It gave me a vocation that uh, restored some motivation and direction in my life. The staff and the residents here have been a huge blessing to me. Those who support Portland Rescue Mission are serving people in need by giving hope and restoring life. Right, and now here to tell us about all the work the Portland Rescue Mission does in our community for men, women, and children without a home, we welcome Executive Director Eric Bauer. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Trey. Oh my gosh, what a moving video piece. Mm. I mean, you've seen a lot of lives change, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Oh yeah. But what are some of the things that you've recently seen in homelessness here? Changes? or well, in the community, camping the last year has become much more prolific. Mm -hmm. um, there's unfortunately been a lot more deaths on the street than there has been in quite a while. Uh, usually we have around 50 people a year pass away on the street. This last year we've had over 80. What? Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. More than one a week. Is that like weather related? And I'm, in, I'm assuming the increase is somewhat weather related because we have such a wicked w winter yes. weather. Yeah. But you know, it, there's accidents, it's over, overdosing, it's illnesses crime, um, weather, all the above yeah. happens. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Well, we're raising money today, yes. right, for the mission. Why don't you tell us how you guys use that money in support of overcoming homelessness? Sure. We have two basic service deliveries. One is downtown. Everybody knows us by our Burnside shelter downtown. The yes. line. That is called the ER, the emergency room. We okay. do the basic needs of life are being met. Shelter, food, bathrooms, clothing, hygiene products, someone to talk to, referring people to other agencies so they can get help in mental health or, or physical health. Mm -hmm. The other half is in Northeast Portland and we have addictions recovery programs. Okay, so important. And they're like, I call them the OR, the operating room. They're a long-term permanent fix. It's a one-year program, life skills, spiritual growth, addictions recovery mm -hmm. for men in, in one facility and women and children in another facility. Okay, okay. And so tell me this, is there a component of like a give back reciprocity when you go through something like that, the program like well, that? Well, I think I've never not seen gratitude. When people change, their, their lives are radically changed. There's a gratitude to, to, your, to whoever helped them or to God or to whoever they see us, who was instrumental in their, in their development. Right. There's a natural gratitude. And we have a program called Service at the end of our one-year recovery that men and women can choose if they want to serve for an extra six months, serving the people that are in downtown mm -hmm. or in the recovery center. And they can use their own story as encouragement and hope for those they're, they're serving. Absolutely. Well, it resonates with people. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. they, and, it's, and it's genuine because they've mm -hmm. been through it themselves. And then they have empathy. They have understanding. Mm -hmm. It's fresh. It's a, it's a very good combination. Now, am I to understand that you have absolutely no government funding? None. No, it's all 100% private funding. In fact, 80% of our funding is from individual people. Wow. A lot of people giving a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the last 20% is businesses, foundations, or churches giving something too. Sure. And that's it. All private money. Well, so today we're asking people to start off with a gift of maybe $9, mm -hmm. $18. But how can we, how, how does that $9 actually help? Well, $9 will give somebody shelter, a shower, clothing, and a meal tonight. For one day? Yep. Really? $9. Tonight, we will have 220 people downtown in our shelter facility mm -hmm. tonight. We'll be full. And another 100 people out in Northeast Portland in the recovery program. So over, th over 300 people tonight will be serving. And the $9 will cover the cost of someone downtown in the shelter. Well, I understand that uh, you have a partnership with Fred Meyer that can even help out even more. Mm, yes. What's that about? Well, they'll double. You know, whatever we give, they'll give. They're going to double it just yeah. like that? Yeah. Whatever it is? Well. That's exciting. Uh, yes. <laughs> that's very exciting. Uh, up to a certain amount, yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, within reason. But that's excellent. Yeah. 
All right, well, this is fantastic. We look forward to hearing even more about all of the services from the Portland Rescue Mission. Don't worry about it. Coming up next, thank you, Eric, by the way. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, last year, countless people without homes were displaced from camping, as you mentioned, along the Spring Water Corridor and other areas in Portland. But where did they all go? Well, stay tuned. We're going to find out. Oh, hey, look at that. We got a shot of the phone bank. And don't forget, all show long, we are taking your calls, a call that can provide that safety and care for someone in need, just $9. We heard that just now can make all the difference. 800-346-9256 with your donation, or you can give online at portlandrescuemission.org. And don't forget, for $18 a month, you'll receive a $20 Fred Meyer gift card with our thanks for your support. Today's Afternoon Live is brought to you by Portland Rescue Mission. All right, we're back with our Shelter 365 Telethon for Portland Rescue Mission and making the day brighter for people in Portland who have the least. Just $9 a month gives a meal, shelter, and care. Well, $9 a day, I do believe. $18 a month will help for the month. The life of a hurting person in need. Call 800-346-9256 or give online at portlandrescuemission.org. I can't imagine a better way to help others than to give someone a fresh start in life. So just a few months ago, countless of our homeless were displaced from sleeping in areas around Portland. But where did they all go? So I've been out on the streets around now for about two and a half years, slipping on cardboard, concrete, grass. Oh, it, it's a rain is going to rain. Bone chilling. My, my, I, I, I have arthritis in most of my, most of my joints, and it's very, very difficult for me. When I was homeless, I missed, you know, the people that I loved in my life because they weren't here. Well, typically uh, at the Portland Rescue Mission, we open up our winter shelter on November 1st. But due to the weather recently and the circumstances in the city, we've opened up our emergency shelter 100 days early brought in 94 mats and just invited anybody in the city to come spend the night with us. And since July, we've been at capacity. Well, it means I'll be safe. It means that I'll have a place that's warm and the weather, I'll get a meal. It, it's everything. It's everything. It's pretty much everything there is. Um, having a warm, safe shelter it's literally the best feeling in the world. It's my final step off the street. It is my, it is the first step to a better life forever. It really helped you sleep and you know, and being a military vet, I have issues with uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and there's some times where I'm afraid to even go to sleep because my dreams I know are gonna be nightmares but just having a safe environment, you know, to close my eyes, it's, it's a huge, huge benefit. And I'm very, very thankful that they're here. You know, sometimes you can be having a real bad day, and I'm pretty sure that, that these people here have saved a couple of guys that were headed for that bridge. These mats, our, our meals, the uh, showers that we offer, the restrooms that we offer, these are all ways uh, that we give hope and restore life. Here to share more, we welcome from the Portland Rescue Mission, their guest care manager, Andrew Hall. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you very much. Now, you have to tell me, what does your role as the guest care manager at the mission really entail? 
Yeah, uh, Portland Rescue Mission has several locations throughout the, the city. Uh, we have two residential recovery programs on the east side of the city. Where I work is the Burnside Shelter on the Burnside Bridge. Uh, we serve 900 meals a day. Um, we have showers, we have shelter, we, uh, we provide many services to, to people of need. So um, I get to be there every single morning and uh, serving, serving breakfast and just chatting with folks and, and right. uh, acknowledging them. Right, right, making sure everything goes smoothly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, 900 meals a day? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. Absolutely. So can people just sort of come in when they need to? Or are there specific times of day? Yeah, so we have uh, two meals every single day, and then on the weekends we have lunch. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we provide services 24 hours a day. Uh, we're one of the only places in the city that is a 24-hour public restroom. Um, so people can come in every minute of the day. Um, people experience crisis any minute of the day, so we want to be open every minute of the day. Isn't that the truth? Well, thank goodness for that. Now, what are some of the misconceptions that people have about those without homes? Yeah, you know, it's easy for us to think of a homeless person as, um, as lazy or mm -hmm. dangerous only mm -hmm. because we don't quite understand them, that we might not be in that same situation. But mm -hmm. the individuals that I work with on a daily basis um, are, are just like you and me. They're, they're people that have experienced hurt. Um, they're people that are, are broken due to abuse, due to divorce, due to losing a loved one or loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, Poverty, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And so uh, they're just individuals like you and me who, who need hope, and that's where we come in. Right, need a little help. Everybody needs a little help, Absolutely. right? Now, how do you help people regain a sense of, of um, I don't know, confidence after they've come through the doors? I can imagine that people are feeling pretty, you know, beat down by for the sure. streets. You can imagine that for somebody experiencing homelessness, uh, they might go days without being acknowledged. Uh, and so the first thing that we can do to provide hope is to look into a person's eyes and say, good morning, um, how are you? And, and the more that we can learn an individual's name and their background, the more we can address them. Um, with every service that we provide, especially a, a shower, a, a warm place to sleep at night, um, that person can then go back out onto the streets with a little more dignity, mm -hmm. a little more confidence, and face whatever is to come to look for housing to reconnect with family and all of that so um, by providing basic needs is our ability to provide hope I was just gonna say like those that hierarchy of basic needs Absolutely. once those are met somebody feels a little bit a little bit better about for stepping sure. out into the the cold world as for we sure. know it right now it definitely is cold Absolutely. and so having the shelter there having all the different programs really really makes a difference in the individual lives of people Absolutely. and when you see children what do you do what's I'm just curious when you see kids what do you what's one of the first try to make do? them smile huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they know that it's it's going to a homeless shelter for a child is, is gonna be hard and and they know walking in that it's not a place uh, 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 that they necessarily want to be in so we we make them happy, try to make them smile, try to make them laugh, and, yeah. and welcome everybody that we can. Well, I can see that you definitely do that. You are very passionate about your Thank job. You. Thank you so much. All right, now up next, one local man shares his emotional journey of fear, loss of dignity, and despair, and how he picked himself right on back up. Now all you have to do is call. 800, look at all those people waiting for you to call. 800-346-9256 right now to donate. Portland Rescue Mission will put your gift to good use right away to help hungry people in need. Or of course, you can go online and give there, portlandrescuemission.org. Welcome back to the Shelter 365 Telethon. Today we're dedicating the show to helping Portland Rescue Mission provide shelter, meals, and care to our neighbors in need. Please pick up the phone right now and call 800-346-9256 or give online, that's fine too, portlandrescuemission.org. So to you or me, a meal might not seem like much, but to a hungry person who hasn't eaten for days, a hot meal can warm their heart and change their life. I ended up burning every bridge, and nobody wanted me around, nobody trusted me in their house. I uh, ended up in downtown Portland, you know, a place where I didn't know how to be homeless. Uh, I stayed in a really bad little ratty hotels for a little bit. When I got hungry, I just uh, was eating off of food stamps, but they ran out, and I had to swallow my pride and uh, ask for some help. Someone told me to Portland Rescue Mission. When I first came in to eat, I thought that I'd be looked upon as a homeless person. You know, I was real dirty. I didn't think anybody would have anything to do with me, but somebody met me at the door, shook my hand, and as people were serving me food, they're smiling and asking me how I'm doing. And uh, 
I was really surprised at the food. It was a full meal. It was meat, potatoes, and a dessert. People were volunteering to serve me food, and even though I was feeling at the lowest of the low, they were still loving on me. To be coming out of the streets like the way I did and to be welcomed the way I was, it just made me feel good. It made me not feel so scared. I just knew that I was safe right then. If it wasn't for foreign arrest conditions, I'd probably be dead. I was 40 years old. I was just going down the wrong path. And here it is eight years later. I got my license back and a couple of vehicles. I had a couple of good jobs. I got my credit back. I've been in the same apartment now for five years without having a single bill to be late. Call 800-346-9256 now to donate or give online at portlandrescuemission.org. Yes, we are here with John Dominguez and Mike Deccan of Portland Rescue Mission. John, man, you were once homeless. Thank you for telling and sharing your story. How, can, how was your experience? I'm, I'm curious to know what it was like, the Portland Rescue Mission. Well, it was, it was tough. You know, I had to, uh, I had to let, you know, first come to the point where I'd ask for help. And the Portland Rescue Mission was there when I needed a meal, ran out of food uh, on the stamps and yeah. had to be someplace. Well, how long were you out on the streets? Well, for probably two years. But I, yeah, probably two years after I got kicked out from my sister's house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where that was the final straw to be out there bouncing around from home to home and right there in Portland. Yeah, so when you finally got to the point where you, you asked for help, help was there for you, wasn't it? Yes. Man, in a big way. You mentioned the food and, not, and being surprised that there were like full meals there. Yes. Well, tell us about it. Did it taste good? <laughs> well, like I said, I was really surprised because I'd always thought of soup kitchen where you get a piece of bread and some soup. Sure. But they made sure that it was a full meal and uh, the people serving it were uh, really, they were welcoming. They were just really there for you. Um, like I said, it was a, a dessert, uh, something to drink and mm -hmm. a place to sit and just be safe. And now look at you. You said in the package that you've been living in your same apartment for five years now? Yes. You well, said you had multiple vehicles, you got your license back? Yes, it's, it's been great. I, uh, it's, it's 10 years now. 10 years now. Congratulations. That's yes. fantastic. So how exactly did the mission change your life? Well, I mean, before I went in there, I was, I was really uh, looking at myself more than I was for other people. And mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they uh, gave me a chance to just to see other people from a different point of view. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. yeah. And yourself. Yes. From a different point of view. From a different point of view. And what opportunities now do you have to help and give back to other people? Well, that, that's really funny. I, uh, in my other life, I was a karaoke DJ. Oh. And so, so doing that uh, was really tough for me because it was at the bars, and I told myself I would never go back to doing that. Oh, okay. But now I've, I have the opportunity to go down to the Portland Rescue Mission, the Burnside Shelter, mm -hmm. and I do the uh, karaoke for the guests down there. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, and do you have some stars in there? Somebody oh. we may be able to see? You would be surprised. I mean, people, they don't understand how people just really open up, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of day they're having. Mm -hmm. To go out there, sing a John Cougar song, they'll really enjoy themselves. Wow. Uh -huh. No, that's a beautiful image that you're painting, and I, I, I appreciate you for sharing your story. And congrats again. And Mike, tell us about the role that you play over at the mission. Well, thank you for asking. I, I get the pleasure, the honor, Trey, of, of sharing these stories. And we share them through the videos and through newsletters and, and through mail pieces. And, and having heard so many stories, I'm always amazed. And, and John's story in particular is, is a perfect example of how somebody could come in needing basic needs, mm -hmm. like, like a meal or a place to sleep. But once you meet those needs, then you can start to access other resources like our recovery programs and vocational training. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate goal of that is to give somebody what they need to live a successful life, like John, and then they come back and they want to invest in other people's lives. So when you make those meals and those nights of shelter possible, you really are providing the first steps to a second chance. Absolutely. And I think one of the key things that I keep hearing is the greeting at the door, treating people like people and not like labels. You know, and we hear that a lot, you know, thank you for treating me like a human being because that's something that doesn't happen on the street. So when they come through our yellow door at Burnside, we want to look them in the eye, shake their hand, give them a hug, learn their name, and let them know that they're valued. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you guys for coming thank and you, sharing. All right, now coming up next, 
Robin's daughter was murdered, her marriage fell apart, and she ended up homeless and freezing on the streets of Portland. Hear her remarkable story of hope up next. And don't forget to call. Keep those phones ringing, 800-346-9256 right now to get that $20 Fred Meyer gift card and have your gift doubled. That's 800-346-9256 or give online at portlandrescuemission.org. Welcome back to the Shelter 365 Telethon here on Afternoon Live. No one should be hungry and cold and alone without a home. That's why K2 and Portland Rescue Mission are asking for your generous support today. Your gift of just $9 a month shows loving care to a hurting man, woman, or child in need. And all the gifts this hour are being matched to provide double the shelter, meals and care at Portland Rescue Mission. Just call 800-346-9256. Now, how do people become homeless? One local woman named Robin certainly never thought it would happen to her. When tragedy st uh, struck her life, Portland Rescue Mission was there to help. I was married 27 years, and I was a mom. My role as a mom was to raise my children with love. We had a good marriage, um, but my daughter was murdered in 2006 and my marriage kind of crumbled. And then in 2011, he kicked me out. Life on the streets, it was awful. You live day by day, minute by minute. You're always searching for your next meal. You're doing things that you never thought you would do ever in your life. One day in the winter, I was walking by a dumpster. I got a really nice piece of cardboard. It was one of the thicker pieces of cardboard. And I thought, oh, all right. I mean, I was happy. It, it excited me. It was a, it covered my whole body. And I thought, wow, I'm gonna sleep good tonight. Before you know it, I was waking up in the morning and I was freezing cold. I was wet. It was like 30 degrees out. And someone had stolen my cardboard. My feet were numb. My hands were numb. I was shaking. It was cold, and that piece of cardboard meant everything to me that night. Coming into the mission, I had no belief in God. My faith was gone. I was broken. I didn't have anything. They opened their arms up and let me come in. They gave me love. They gave me my faith back. They gave me food. They gave me my life. After three months of being in the program, it turned me around 100%. The mission, man, the mission gave me everything back that I could ask for and more. Thank you. Joining us now, we welcome to Afternoon Live, Robin Lloyd, along with from the Portland Rescue Mission, Alexa Mason. Welcome you both. Thank you. Robin. I'm so touched by your story. Thank you. I really want you to share with us what it's like to be a woman homeless on the streets. Oh, it's, it's awful. It's scary. Um, it's scary, it's cold, it's lonely, you're hungry, um, and you're constantly having to search or where, you know, another place to sleep or mm -hmm. um, hoping that you can have a friend that's got a shower or something, you know, and it's scary because there's so many guys out there and women that want to rip, you know, rip your stuff off mm -hmm. if you have anything of value or anything. Um, yeah, they want to fight. They want, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that you have had tremendous mm. loss so I want to tell you that I'm sorry for your loss you. Um, and you never thought that you would be in a situation where you would be homeless what did you think about people without homes before that was your situation oh I thought wow I I just thought you know that's too bad but I would never be like that mm -hmm. you know I had I had a family and kids and um, I just I, I didn't look at it like like I would ever be in, you know, 50 years old and being homeless. Right. And, and I thought, you know, I always felt bad for people. I'd see them and I thought, nah, that'll never be me. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, but it was. It was. But look at you now. You went into the doors over at the Portland Rescue Mission. Talk to us about how that changed your life. Oh, I was, I was broken when I went in the doors. Um, I was about giving up. I didn't want, I just didn't want to live no more. Mm -hmm. And my last hope was walking through those doors and oh my gosh, they gave me just, they welcomed me, they loved me, they gave me stability, they gave me uh, security, they gave me a place to sleep every night, yeah. you know, and put my things. And they taught me the basic, the what everybody takes up, you know, like, oh, you should know that already. Well, you lose that when you're homeless, you know, like getting up early in the morning, mm -hmm. um, going out to look for jobs or going to schools or going to classes. You lose that when you're on the streets. You I think know? that's a really important piece that people don't get. I, I, that's resonating with me because I think about when people are in routines right? and then you're out on the street and there is no real routine except mm -hmm. just getting your basic needs met. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And so you were able to, to get back into that groove and relearn how to get out there. So tell me how your life is now. Oh, I have my own place, my own little apartment. Yes. And um, it's, I live with um, women clean and sober. Mm -hmm. And I've got, I'm coming up on 30 months clean and sober. Congratulations. Thank you. And I, I have a, a nice guy in my life. Um, and right. I get to see my kids, even though they live far away, they come down. Mm -hmm. And then I've been able to go up there and visit them, which I never thought was going to happen. But I get to see my grandbabies and my kids, and it's just awesome. That's great. That's great, Robin. Thank Alexa, you. tell me about real quick how you know your role helps women uh, through the Portland Rescue Mission. Yeah, so in my role, I get the honor of meeting people like Robin and so many other incredible women who have experienced a lot of abuse. They've experienced trauma, but yet they still have come and tried to do something to turn their life around. And so many of them talk about their kids, too. So it's really always good when you get to hear of families reconnecting, because um, my job is really to hear those stories, to see those people, and to build relationships, and then go tell the community about it like we're doing today, and let the community know that when you partner with Portland Rescue Mission, it's not just money that you're giving away, but it's people that you're investing in like Robin and so you get to help restore life you get to give hope you get to do all of that with the mission um, and you get to help people like Robin and so many others get to restore their lives with their family and and their community and give back to the community and that's what it's all about and we're definitely getting that word out today yeah. thank you ladies so much for joining thank us you. and coming up next wow without a home how would you eat? Where would you sleep? Where would you even find a shower or a restroom? Stay with us as we take a look at how people survive on the streets of Portland. Now, but before we do that, do not forget to call our volunteers. They are standing by. Keep those phones ringing. We want to take your donations, your gifts, 800-346-9256. Today's Afternoon Live is brought to you by Portland Rescue Mission. Welcome back to the Portland Rescue Mission Shelter 365 Telethon here on Afternoon Live. Look at all those volunteers waiting for your call at 800-346-9256. Your gift of $9 a month to help provide anything a hurting person needs for a new start in life is just so wonderful. You can also give online at portlandrescuemission.org. Every gift this hour, by the way, is being matched to double your donation. Now, what is it like to be without a home? Where do you go when your life falls apart? Who will care enough to help you overcome your mistakes and start a new life? For hundreds of people every day, Portland Rescue Mission stands as a beacon of hope in the darkness. For the last three days, I haven't slept because it's been so cold. You have to constantly be on your guard. One, just to stay alive. And two, just to keep anything that you happen to have with you, because people will steal. I went behind a storage unit, grabbed a bunch of moving blankets, went to a little sheltered, covered area, and crawled in the blankets and went to sleep. Just gotta keep moving. <laughs> It's cold. <laughs> Yesterday it was 17 degrees, according to my watch. 
17 degrees. That's below freezing point. You really get a lonely feeling out here. It gets cold and lonely. And even though you're surrounded by people, you start thinking that nobody cares whether I live or die. So what difference does it make? My worst night being outside, I think um, I stuffed my clothes with toilet paper um, inside my pants. Um, and I got into a honey bucket just for out of the um, you know cold air. And, um, just shivered and I figured if I would hold still it'd get warm and my teeth were chattering I remember and um, I was like I'll do anything to get inside. When it's, when it's raining it's the worst nights because once you get wet you cannot warm up. The cold goes right through you all the way to your bones. Call 800-346-9256 now to donate or give online at portlandrescuemission.org. We have with us today Derek Spears, who has been a longtime volunteer with Portland Rescue Mission, and Andrew Hall is back with us, who is on staff with the mission. Welcome. Thank you. Derek, you've been a longtime volunteer. Yes. Tell us what the volunteering experience is like. Oh, it's powerful. Uh, I'm retired Air Force, and uh, what it's like for me is seeing people that are in, in shock. Mm. And trying to figure it out, but at the same time to try to hold it together so you don't look vulnerable. Uh, it's, um, it's very enlightening mm -hmm. uh, to see it. What are some of the volunteer opportunities that people have? I mean, I, I imagine that people automatically know, well, maybe I can serve some food, but what are some of the other things that people can do? You know, there's so many things you can do. I, I think it was mentioned quite a bit earlier. Uh, one, give that smile. Yes. How are you? Yeah. It's going to be all right. Uh, you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you? Yeah. And, and we can assume how they are doing, but still those human touches that we, most of us take for granted, once you hear it, you could just see all of these layers melt. Wow. That's one of the ways that I... Yeah, yes. I could imagine that would be powerful. Um, tell me about one of the more memorable people or, or experiences that you've had as a volunteer. I know you've come across a whole lot of people, yeah. but maybe there's someone that's stuck in your head for some reason. Wow, there, there are a lot of folks. <laughs> Actually, everyone that comes in the door, but there's one lady in particular. Her name is Connie. Mm -hmm. And Connie is 72 years old. She lives on the street, and she always just wants to pray. Where's Derek? I want to pray. And we, we give prayer, we smile at her, and we tell jokes, and we just open the floodgates for, for Connie. And it's interesting because after we do that, she disappears. Is that right? She always just disappears. So that might be her basic need. Sometimes yeah. people think that it's just food, just, yes. you know, a warm place to sleep, going to the restroom and showering, things like that. But it could also very well be a basic need just to have a community with somebody else. I think so. With Connie, very much so. <laughs> yeah. And she looks for you. <laughs> <laughs> you must be good to pray with. <laughs> I'm about to talk to you after the show. Andrew, I know that you have also encountered numerous, numerous people in your work. What are some of the more memorable experiences or people that you've come across? Absolutely. Um, again, the stories are innumerable, um, but uh, I remember when I got on staff about two years ago, first week I was there, I met a man that was uh, in the exact same place that I was, or I was in the exact same place that he was. Um, our, our brokenness, our hurt, the things we were wrestling with, struggling with, were all exactly the same. The only difference was that I had a place to stay and he didn't, you know? And it just emphasizes how, how um, typical every individual is, and, and, but how unique their story is, you yeah. know? And, and that man, after a couple weeks of knowing him, just kind of disappeared, and, and I like to think that he was finally, after receiving shelter and meals and getting those basic needs met, he was able to get his, his feet back under him and, yeah. and disappeared for, for good reasons. Yeah, yeah, well, we hope so, right? Yeah, but, I mean, it's good that people right. feel like they can come and go. They're not obligated yeah. to have to do Absolutely. anything. They yes. just come and, you know, you can get what you need, and hopefully come on back if yes. you need it again. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you guys so much yes. for all that you do. Thank you. It's You're greatly appreciated. Well, coming up next, how do people escape homelessness? The first step that leads them home just might surprise you.
Now all show long, our volunteers are still taking those calls. $9 can make a difference, a huge difference. So call 800-346-9256 with your gift. Or you can give online at portlandrescuemission.org. And don't forget that $18 a month that you'll receive a $20 Fred Meyer gift card with our thanks for your support. You're watching K2's Portland Rescue Mission Shelter 365 Telethon right here on Afternoon Live. Please continue to call. Our volunteers are here and ready to accept your gift to help a hurting person who needs a new life. How about $9 a month? You can help give that and start someone on their journey. Call 800-346-9256 right now to give or to donate online. You can go to portlandrescuemission.org. Thank you again for watching. Now, to you or me, having a bed to sleep in might not seem like much, but to someone forced to sleep outside, afraid and cold, having safe shelter can warm their heart and change their life. Portland Rescue Mission is like our living room. You can go there. If you need to go to the bathroom, they'll give you a toothbrush. They'll do whatever they need to do. And they give us back our pride. Portland Rescue Mission has kept me alive. They feed me daily, and for that I'm grateful. And without that, I would have starved to death a long time ago. As far as I'm concerned, they save lives every single day. They kept me from freezing to death. Just in the last day or two, five people have died out here from freezing to death. That's the first thing I do in the morning, I get up, I head straight for the mission, I go get my coffee, and uh, once you get it, once you step inside, it, the coldness kind of just peels off. It keeps us, our hearts beating, and a warm heart is not a sick mind. When people come to the Portland Rescue Mission, they will receive a blanket, they'll receive a mat, or they could go downstairs for their own bed even. Um, they'll receive showers, so they will receive all the hygiene items needed necessarily to cleanse yourself properly. Even three pairs of clothes when they come in, they will receive more than I think that they'll be aware of and when they make it to these doors. It's a blessing. Call 800-346-9256 now to donate or give online at portlandrescuemission.org. Mike Deccan is back with us from the Portland Rescue Mission. Mike, just what is one of the one things that you just really want people to know? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, what I want people to know is that when you provide something like a meal or, or shelter, it, it's not just about those services. It, it's about letting those men and those women know that they're valuable. And that's a message that they don't get on the street. When they're left alone in their hunger, in their, in their loneliness, in their pain, when they're stepped over or abused, for them to come in and get that handshake and get that hot meal and, and to know for the first time in a long time that somebody cared enough to make that possible, yes. that's where lives start to change. Yeah, I like how the woman said, a warm heart. That's what people, I think yeah. it really does start there, yes? Absolutely. It, yeah. it's, it's hope. That's what hope looks like. And that's what we need. We that's, need that. That's why we're here today. Well, we also <laughs> need the gifts. We need the gifts, too. It makes it possible. And I have yeah. a really quick question I wanted sure. to ask you. How can people get involved beyond gift giving, like volunteering? Do you just go down and sign me up? Sure. Or you can go on to portlandrescuemission.org, and we have a link. You can see volunteer opportunities. You can sign up right there. Just like that. That's Easy it. peasy. And we'd love to see you. Man, I, I think that would be a wonderful thing. <laughs> Me too. For everybody to get involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for sharing all of these wonderful stories. Thank you. Really appreciate you. And I look forward to working with you again soon. Very soon. Thank all you right. so much, Trey. Well, we'll be right back with more from the 365 Telethon for Portland Rescue Mission. So don't forget to call our volunteers who are standing by to take your donations to help those in need in our community. That number again, 800-346-9256, or you can give online at portlandrescuemission.org.